I see it. So a driverless cab is coming to pick us up. This is it. In select US cities, driverless cabs or robo-taxis are driving people around, threatening to render millions of cab drivers jobless. I've come to Phoenix, Arizona to try a robo-taxi called Waymo. It's owned by Alphabet, the same company that owns Google. I'm a little nervous as well, honestly. I've never been in a car with no one behind the wheels. I take the ride with Gabriel, a 70-year-old taxi driver of Italian origin who loves his job and doesn't want to lose it. Very sad. Our ride took an unexpected turn, making us wonder whether we were being watched. Hi, this is John with Waymo Support. A former expert with General Motors, GM, offered us his informed prediction on when we might see robo-taxis hitting the streets of every major city. Insider information. I don't think the, the society, the public, knows everything. Few places get hotter than Phoenix. It's a city in Arizona, the heart of the American Southwest. Aptly named after the mythical bird that rises from its ashes, Phoenix is rising as a hub for transforming transportation. This arid desert has become a testing ground for the future of mobility. Robotaxis now transport passengers through sun-soaked avenues flanked by iconic landmarks of an ancient city where people have lived for more than 2,000 years. People trust these robots with their lives. It says it's three minutes away. I'm about to be one of those. I'll also be accompanied by Gabriel Zordo, an Uber driver I met after booking his ride service. Gabriel is originally from Italy. His friendly demeanor and engaging conversations added enjoyment to the ride. The human drivers like him face uncertainty in this city as artificial intelligence threatens human dominance in various domains. Gabriel has never been on a robot taxi, but that's about to change. Would you be interested in trying one? Being one away more? Yes. Okay, let's do it. We can do it now. Really? Yes. Okay, we yeah, can do let's, it. Let's check it out. Let's, let's check it out. Let's see you drive this car. Gabriel and I are now waiting for our very first Waymo driverless cab ride. Yes. I'm really excited, even though I'm a little nervous as well, honestly. I've never been in a car with no one behind the wheels. Ah, uh, me neither have I. And, and uh, let's, let's hope for the best. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> I hailed the robot taxi through the Waymo app, kind of like ordering an Uber. As it gracefully pulls up, stopping right outside my hotel gate, the surreal realization sinks in. This car navigates the city entirely on its own. No human behind the wheel. And now we're gonna hop in. When you're all set to hop into the car, just tap the unlock button on the Waymo app. Watch the Jaguar's door handles pop out signaling that you're good to go. Inside, you'll find a touchscreen with the start ride button. Hit that and off you go. The car starts moving smoothly, following its route to the destination you've specified in the app. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at the steering wheel. This is wild, right? This is very wild. Look at this, the steering wheel. Absolutely. Once you're settled inside the car, a friendly message welcomes you offering instructions to ensure a safe journey. It kind of feels like you are starting an airplane ride. Hello, from Waymo. Outside, you'd often catch surprise glances from drivers and pedestrians on the sidewalks. Back when they first hit the streets a few years ago, not everyone welcomed robotaxis with open arms. Some residents were outright displeased, resulting in incidents like attacks on driverless cabs with stones and slash tires. They were not happy about their city being turned into a testing ground for a potentially dangerous technology. Then a tragedy occurred. 
The incident didn't involve way more. It revolved around Gabriel's employer, Uber. Despite already taking a 25-50% to 50% cut from riders' fares, Uber seemed hungry for more. A full 100% share. To achieve that, they started testing self-driving taxis with an emergency driver behind the wheel. One night, the emergency driver seemed preoccupied with their phone when the robo-taxi struck a 50-year-old woman. In 2018, mm. um, the Uber autonomous vehicle was testing, also testing mm. Phoenix area um, and caused the accident, that's the first accident, that self-driving car killed a pedestrian. Professor Zhao used to work at General Motors GM, the company behind popular cars like GMC and Cadillac. He was part of the company's electric vehicles department. Like Google, GM tested its self-driving vehicles called Cruise in San Francisco until October when it suspended operations due to an incident. A human-driven car hit a woman, throwing her in front of a cruise robot taxi, which struck her again, dragging her for nearly 20 feet as it attempted to pull over. The woman suffered serious injuries. Following the incident, the California government revoked Cruise's licenses, saying that GM's robot taxis were, quote, not safe. For the past few years, Zhao has been leading a lab at Arizona State University, dedicated to making autonomous cars a reality everywhere. I'm here for his insider insights on where we are today and how far are we from turning driving into a thing of the past. Are we at a point where we should trust autonomous cars? Um, I think we are in the process of developing this trust. Um, so I don't think the, the society, the pu public knows everything, knows uh, um, know the technology well mm -hmm. um, to get a correct idea uh, about whether to, uh, uh, how much you, they should trust. So as a human being, you have to get to a certain age, mm -hmm. um, have gained some intelligence before you can really handle uh, and master the driving skills. Um, so we're talking about um, um, the development of AI, how to make the system think and perceive like human beings of the traffic environment. Mm -hmm. So our lab here is called the Battery Electric and Intelligent Vehicle Lab. Mm -hmm. So what we do, um, the research includes autonomous driving, uh, vehicle connectivity, um, electrification. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to develop this uh, clean, safe, and more efficient um, mobility technology mm -hmm. uh, for the society. Phoenix was the first city used by Waymo to test its robot taxis. You may be wondering why. Why Phoenix? Why has Phoenix been chosen as the testing ground for uh, these autonomous vehicles? Yeah, well, so we here we have unique advantages. Um, so that's why you see a lot of robot taxis being uh, tested here. Uh, first of all, we have very good weather. Mm -hmm. So doesn't rain snow, doesn't rain that much because um, sensors, um, the sensing capability can be um, limited if you are in extreme weather condition. Mm. And we have very good uh, uh, transportation infrastructure. So if you took a look at the, the road network, it's well maintained, not many potholes, <laughs> it's a lane mark, it's very clear. Should, should taxi drivers be worried at, in Phoenix, let's say for example, that uh, you know, they might lose their jobs in the next few years. Yeah, I can understand the, uh, the worry or the concern, um, but um, in the near future, I don't foresee that their jobs will be replaced um, by robot taxi in a large scale. <laughs> Maybe some area there will be more competition. Um, but just like you mentioned, it's similar to AI situation. Sometimes the new technology um, will of course, replace some of the human's uh, 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 role, but at the same time, increase yeah. human's work efficiency and it will create new job opportunities. Is the future of transportation what we see here in Phoenix? I hope that can become a reality. Mm -hmm. And really, this new technology can help the society. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we still have a long way to go. How long exactly? Professor Zhao's student puts a number on it. 
with this with this uh, speed of all the technology or integrated into one thing, I'm pretty I'm positive that this technology will be mature enough within the next decade. So just imagine one day we, you know, one day in the morning, just get out, get up, and then get out, get on the car, and I can just you know tell the car hey where I want to go, and then just drive it automatically. And not having to do anything. Not having to do anything, or maybe after a long day at work, and then get in the car, say, I just want to go to some places, but maybe a nice restaurant, and then just go out there and not have to do anything since I already have mm -hmm. having a tired day. Not everyone is as enthusiastic about being in a car driven by a robot. I think that it makes me nervous that there's not someone in the vehicle, so I think they're dangerous. Um, I've never been in one. My family's never been in one. Would you be willing to try one? No. Public skepticism persists, even though way more robot taxis appear to be safer than human drivers. In December, for example, Waymore reported that it had completed more than 700,000 ride-hailing trips with public riders and no driver. In all those trips, covering more than 7 million miles or about 11 million kilometers, only three injury-causing crashes happened. And the injuries were all minor, according to Waymo. In other words, Waymo cars caused 85% less injury-causing incidents. Put simply, if humans drove, those three incidents would have been 13. Professor Zhao showed us the type of technology that self-driving cars like Waymo use. He has led the development of a self-driving car in his university lab, which for now can only operate within the campus. Um, so, so far, I think um, the Waymo vehicle, if they are operating in the, um, the, the domain they have this designed, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's quite uh, smooth, conservative, mm -hmm. um, but smooth. Mm -hmm. um, they can handle the most of the um, scenarios. Um, but sometimes you will see that there's corner case um, uh, happens uh, and they might get into some incident, not severe, but some incidents. Gabriel and I hope to avoid those corner cases in our ride today. Think about it. This car can work 24-7. It's not like you getting tired. Like me, humans, we get tired. This car oh, doesn't get tired. Yeah, I never looked at it. I, I never, I never considered it that. Uh, Hi, this the, is John with Waymo Support. I'm calling to remind you that you must wear a seatbelt while riding in the Waymo car. I see that the one in the front passenger is not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, okay, sorry, he's actually filming with his camera because uh, that's why he cannot, uh, you know, be buckled up. Uh, we are like a TV crew. Is that okay? Just like for a little bit. Uh, let me confirm that. Give me a minute. Okay, sure. Thank you. Like the idea of being watched while we are riding. There's, yeah. uh, there's like a... Um, a tower of control mm -hmm. from like an airport. I, I, I like the way you said it. It sounds ironic. I like the idea of being watched. Yeah, no, yeah, in a way, but yeah, you know, I I felt I felt uh, I I felt more secure when the the gentleman told us to yeah. lock up. Yeah, it was it was a surprise actually that a voice came in from nowhere just telling us to buckle up. Our ride was as smooth as any. The car stayed within its lane, executed smooth turns, adeptly avoided obstacles, and adhered to traffic regulations by coming to a complete stop at both stop signs and red traffic lights. And Gabriel was impressed. Even the speed humps, it slowed down and the speed humps, which uh, was impressed with that. Although today's ride was good, Gabriel doesn't trust Waymo to bring his kids home, and he believes he can keep his Uber job for the foreseeable future. Confident to, to rely on Waymo to bring my kids home, and I will, my, the answer would be no. Uh, for, as of now, I feel great. Uh, comfortable, I am not nervous. After we left the robotaxi, Gabriel quickly took out his smartphone to film it driving away, 
going back to pick up more people in Phoenix. With robo taxis like Waymo, there are now fewer passengers for drivers like Gabriel. To wrap up, experts say it's only a matter of time before self-driving cars become a reality. New technologies like 5G can further enhance the capabilities of these vehicles through improved connectivity. It's true that robotaxis like Waymo will lead to job losses, but as Professor Zhao noted, it will also create new job opportunities. After all, self-driving cars need maintenance and human supervision. Most importantly, self-driving cars can be safer than relying on fallible humans behind the wheel. AI-powered robots can be immune to distractions and possess a superior object detection capability. Every day, at least 3,700 people die in car accidents worldwide, with 114 of them being in the United States. If technology can help prevent these deaths, I'm all for it, even if it leads to more job losses than job opportunities. Thanks for watching and goodbye.